create a new string object, okay? We haven't done this before, but we've created turtles, and we just saw an example of creating a rectangle. Um, so while this is different, it should look familiar. We'll declare a variable of type string, and I'm gonna call it river. We're going to assign to that variable the reference returned by saying new string. When we create a new string, we can specify in the parentheses as an argument, what exact sequence of characters do we want? A string is a sequence of characters. And if we literally want this new string to be the sequence of characters that spells Mississippi, M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I, -S 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 -I -I, we can put it in double quotes to tell the Java compiler, I literally want this sequence of characters. And we call that a string literal. A question that's come up is, okay, with this terminal that keeps popping up when we run our programs, how do we print stuff to the terminal? Um, it's not quite as easy as Python, um, but the syntax looks like this, system.out.println. And then in parentheses, we put the variable that refers to a string. We have to pass a string value to that. So like I said, this isn't quite as easy as Python, but it's, it's not too bad. And even though we don't really, we're not familiar with a lot of these words here, we can make some, some good inferences. Question for you all, system. What is system? Is system a variable? Is system a method? What do we think? What do you think? I think it's like a class. So why would you think system is a class? Absolutely. Starts with a capital letter. That's the convention we've seen. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, and it's part of like the standard Java. So like they're going to follow the conventions. So yeah, system is a class. Uh, no, but we're going to follow them anyway. <laughs> um, how about println? Print ln here. Uh, variable, class, method, what do we think? Yeah. So why do you think it's a method? Because it has, it's followed by the previous, um, or no, it comes after the previous and then it's followed by the previous. Absolutely. We, println is a method because it has the period before it and it's got parentheses after it. We're not quite sure what out is. Um, but we'll get, we'll get to that eventually. But at least we know this is a class, this is a method. Here's our arguments. Cool. Let's call a method. So let's do river.replace. So we're calling the replace method on the string referenced by the variable river. And replace is like a, a find and replace in a Google Doc. Find all occurrences of whatever is here and replace it with here. And then let's print that as well. So make a prediction and then run it. See what's printed. I'll run it too. It prints Mississippi uh, twice, which isn't necessarily what we'd expect. There you go. Um, when we start using a new class and calling new methods, we have to be careful with our assumptions. Um, I think it's quite reasonable to assume that this would have replaced the I's with X's. Obviously that's not the case. Um, so let's explain why, and then I'll give you a tool that can help you with this in the future. Um, here's why. The replace method returns a reference to a new string object. 
we can make new objects by saying new in the class name, but function methods we call can also create new objects. And in this case, the replace method makes a new string object for us. Therefore, it does not change the string object on which it is invoked. The sheet of paper we created when we said new string in our conceptual model still has the sequence of characters Mississippi. And in fact, it's not just the replace method. The string class has no mutator methods. It is not possible to change a string object. It'd be convenient to do so, but there is a, a valid Java design reason not to. And we'll get to that later. But like it's intentional that we cannot change a string object. Objects that we can't change, we give a special name to. We call them immutable. Strings are immutable. They cannot be mutated. This doesn't mean like strings are worthless. We, if we want to replace all the I's with X's, we can still do that. It's just that the replace method makes us a new string object and returns that reference. And so we need to store it somewhere. We need to make like another variable and that can store the new reference returned from the replace, oops, method. The reference stored in the variable river x will refer to a second string object where all the i's have been replaced by x's and it'll print out appropriately. We could have reused the variable river. That would be okay as well. We could have down in this line of code said river equals river dot replace. Um, I just wanted to like have a new variable um, just to make that that clear. But even if we said river equals river dot replace, we've changed the value of the variable river. There's still now two string objects. We still made a new string object by calling replace here. We can't change that original sheet of paper. If you're wondering, how was I supposed to know this? Who came up with this? This is ridiculous. All of that, very reasonable reactions. Um, you're not, unless you look it up. And so whenever you're using a new class or a new method, go to Google, type in the word Java doc, J-A-V-A-D-O-C, all one word, type a space, type the name of the class, in this case, string. One of the top results will be from the Oracle Help Center. I'll have the class name. There might be multiple different versions for different versions of Java. I prefer Java SE7 because I think it's the easiest documentation to read. Here it is. This is ridiculously long. So do a control F or command F and search for replace. And then you can click on it and get all the details. And the key part here is this method returns the resulting string. Oh, it returns it. I have to assign it to a variable, okay? That's the part I was missing before. Whew. I think you all should be in really good shape for the next couple of days, uh, which will be great. So good luck with the activity tomorrow.